There is nothing outside of this. This is impossible to talk about because I make it sound so logical and simp simple and intellectual and it really isn't. This is an emerging force, force, the stillness which is everything. The absence of a centre anywhere and that merging forward. It's always been the case but it's just been hidden between this illusion of separation. And it's not in the words that I speak. The words are something that come and go and it's not in their meaning. It is, freedom is, it's everything and it's no one thing. The reason why the human suffered is because this energetic contraction that forms at a very young age and then it sucks in everything and pretends that there's actually a solid center inside this body and that somebody's having an experience and rather than life being as it is totally free and happening to nobody it's happening to somebody moving in time this energetic contraction claims everything and the thing that it mostly claims is time and i move through time and i am my past actions and my future actions It also claims what the body does or didn't, um, what it looks like, the emotions and the feelings, but that's the main dynamic it claims. Me existing in time and I arrived in this room. And there's nobody in this room. There's no I in this room. There is simply life happening for no one. And there's not a center at any of it. And that's fantastic news. It's total freedom, but not for a person, because the person exists in time. And when that centre collapses, there's still a character, the characteristics of what the body is, what others describe you to be, a memory of time. But that character is no longer the centre of the universe. That character is another appearance happening in what is. And the character is the dynamics of, of the body-mind mechanism. So today, I was working for Paul. That's the character. I had a nice day. I live in Holland. I like sunshine. That's the character. And that doesn't have to go. It's that energetic thing that sucks it in and says me. And that's a center experiencing a separate world. So the person actually doesn't need to be improved. The person's not the problem. But while the person's there, it can only see things. So it can only see something wrong with itself or something wrong with the world. So it often goes into the spiritual path and then spends years trying to improve itself, believing it will get enlightened. And there's nothing wrong with the attempt to improve, but it's not you and you can never become enlightened. Enlightenment is everything. Well, it believes it can become enlightened. It's like a hamster in a ball, constantly running around in circles. There's nothing wrong with the act of improving. That's what things do. This character improves her work. This character tidies her room. This character moves to a bigger house or a better house. This character buys a new car. But that's never going to bring you happiness. That's just a series of pleasures and pains. And pleasures and pains come and go. And there's nothing real wrong with the movement towards pleasure, but you will never find enlightenment in a pleasure. Most teachers and most people believe that enlightenment is about you and you getting to a certain emotional and behavioral state. No one would describe enlightenment, or very few would describe enlightenment as the absence of the self, the absence of a center, 
they would say it's the absence of the center, but it's also behaving in a certain way, but it really isn't. The character can be whatever the character is. And that's the beauty of it. The character gets to be truly as it is. The person hears this though, the separate self hears this though, and it tries to copy that and tries to become non-dual, tries to act non-dual as if it doesn't have a center. And it suffers because of that. It suffers because it tries not to have pleasures. It tries to sacrifice, which is just exactly the same as what the Christians do. You have to suffer in order to get closer to God. So it tries to suffer. It tries to sit and meditate for hours. It tries to hurt itself in order to get to this. Sit in I am, I am, I am, I am, I am, I am. Go to talks where it is bored to death. And there's nothing wrong with that, that's what's happening. But it's not in any of that. Enlightenment is. It is. This is such fantastic news. The person then goes, oh God, this is terrible. She's telling me there's nothing I can do to get to it. There's nothing I can do to get there. And on it goes, well, blah, 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 me, 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 me. I can't get there. That's just the exact opposite. And the same thing as I can get there. That's not what I'm saying at all. I'm saying there isn't a you. Yes, but she's saying I can't get there and I don't know what to do and I feel lost. That, and that's, that's all on a different level. That's talking from a different perspective. Enlightenment is, and that's that coming back and waking up and that happens by itself, like everything. You think you came to listen to this talk. You think that you brought yourself to non-duality, but actually non-duality appeared when it was ready to be heard, but not by the person. But then the person tries to be non-dual. And what bores those people are to be around. I'd, ra I'd rather be around a total identified person than somebody that's trying to pretend to be non-dual and holy and not be reactive and not show anger, and not be jealous and not be naughty. Oh my God, I'd rather be around a Christian than that. Terrible. Who says in the middle of an argument, yes, but sweetie, I don't know why you're getting, oh, I don't know why you're getting angry because nothing's happening. There is nobody. I don't know why you're getting angry. This is all there is. <sighs> this is, this is total identification with non-duality. This is the person taking it on as them trying to be non-dual. You see the character becomes more the character. This is such, she's a fireball. She's not some nice spiritual lady that when you're having a tantrum will take her, you into her breast and be like, boo hoo, don't worry, sweetie. She's fire. And there's such love of that. If you knew how every part of everybody, everything is such, is loved beyond any person's imagination. Every part of it, the sparky bits of Lisa, the grumpy bits of Lisa, the beautiful, sweet, soft bits of Lisa. And the other as well. The love is so immense. Yes, but Lisa, surely if you're enlightened, you wouldn't feel any emotions. Because that doesn't make sense. No, this doesn't make sense. But it's so brilliant. And I see people when they come to my talks, they're watching me, trying to work out what I'm like. And really what it is, is they want to say to themselves, it's okay to be me. 
So I, in a way, I think that people, when they come to my talks, they want to see me fuck up. They want to see me angry. They want to see me um, fiery or not nice. Because then they want to say, okay, so it's okay that I'm like I am. And if you knew how much love there is in every action, every word, it's just because the person's separated, it doesn't feel like that. It feels contracted and not enough. But this world is made of total love in all its darkness and lightness. It's a world of opposites. The way that which life and create, created all this is in the world of opposites. But the spiritual seeker wants to find only light. It's scared of the dark. It runs in circles trying to find only light. I love the darkness. And yes, sometimes Lisa cries so much at the darkness and the sadness of it all. But if you didn't have the sadness, you wouldn't see the light. If you didn't have the darkness, you wouldn't see the light. I love watching those videos of animals being saved. And don't you get it? That if the animal wasn't in danger, you wouldn't have the joy of saving. And it's so beautiful, all of it. If you didn't have the pain, there wouldn't be the joy of the pleasure. But the separate self is always trying to look for freedom in that dualistic world. And it won't find it in the dualistic world. The world of opposites is based on opposites and to continuously change. And to be half and half. You won't ever be able to create a world with just lightness, with just peace. That's impossible. Impossible. The freedom has always been its happening, not attempting to stop it happening. It's so beautiful, this subject. And so, Lisa, I'm so in love with it. It makes me want to cry often, the beauty of it all. <laughs>